dear learners greetings from my IIT Guwahati we are again in this course applied thermodynamics module 4 gas turbine engines so prior to this uh, lectures in this module on gas turbine engines we have cover covered four lectures first one is gas turbine engine components thermal circuits so, lecture 2 and 3 were devoted to gas turbine performance cycle and mainly it were these two lectures were intended for power generation. Then in the last lecture that is lecture number 4, we discussed about uh, some real performance cycle by defining some parameters typically known as stagnation properties and in fact this parameter takes care of velocity changes uh, of fluid working fluid in the cycle. Now, an, uh, in today's lecture we are going to start aircraft propulsion cycle. So, in the beginning of the lecture we have made it clear that gas turbine engines are used for two purposes one for power generation other for thrust generations. In earlier uh, lectures, we mainly concentrated on gas turbine engines that were used for power generation. Now onwards, we will see that how this gas turbine engines makes use of uh, the uh, makes use of the propulsion cycle to generate thrust, and its main intention and application is the aircraft engines. So, in this uh, aircraft propulsion cycle, we will discuss about three important topics. First is performance criteria, because the conventional gas turbine performance and aircraft performance are different. So, based on the requirement of aircraft, the performance criteria was decided. Now, with respect to a particular simple turbojet engines using gas turbine um, cycle we will see that how thrust is going to generate. So, these three things we are going to cover. In fact, while, co while talking about this turbojet engines, we will briefly discuss about different components of a gas turbine cycle which is used for thrust generation in aircrafts. So, let me start uh, the with brief introduction that how a propulsion cycle is different from conventional gas turbine power generation number 1, how this propulsion cycle is different from conventional IC engines. Normally in IC engines the combustion process is cyclic in nature, but in a propulsion and we, we do not use the word propulsion there rather it is mainly concentrated on uh, uh, power or although the vehicle moves, but it is mainly concentrated towards power. But in this case, we specific word propulsion comes into pictures because these engines are thrust specific. And this is one aspect. Second aspect is that this aircraft cycle is the concept of this aircraft cycle is different to that of uh, conventional gas type turbine approach, where the attention was focused to power generations and all those gas turbine systems they are on ground based systems and power generation does not require the uh, any vehicle that should fly, but uh, for aircraft propulsion system we mainly require that the aircraft must fly when it is supposed to fly the power to weight ratio is a one of the concerns. And second as approach is that you also have to use those materials uh, which is uh, sufficiently which have sufficient strength at the same time they should be light enough. So, these are some of the major concerns and another aerodynamic approach would be that when you go with altitude when, when you when you move along with the altitude what happens the pressure and temperature drops. So, uh, the vehicle can fly faster. So, the taking that advantage different engines have been developed. So, just to give the brief introduction on this aircraft cycle, first thing that the aircraft gas turbine systems differs from the shaft power cycle in a sense that 
the power output is in the form of thrust and to get this thrust typical engines that we are going to use are turbojet, turbofan engines. So, these are kind of a jet engines. Other category is the turboprop engines where it is propellers you well, there are used. So, these are two category that is jet engines and propeller type engines. And that is what for turbojet engines the propelling nozzles are the a very important component, com component for thrust whereas, turboprop engines it is the propeller that gives the major thrust uh, content. Another aspect is the forward speed, altitude, power to weight ratio are considered for uh, the uh, aircraft performance. And uh, when the gas turbine engines are used for aircraft systems, their essential requirement is takeoff, climb, cruise, maneuvering. So, takeoff means during the takeoff it requires very high initial thrust. So, it has to climb to a particular altitude and when it is just a cruising, it is just a kind of providing necessary thrust just to overcome drag. And maneuvering when the, in the higher altitude uh, or during maneuvering, the uh, when the aircraft makes a turn and in fact, to they do it very for a limited time or limited uh, requirement. So, we call this as a maneuvering. While talking about long range commercial aircraft, the, uh, the another concept that drops in fuel consumption. So, low specific fuel consumption at high cruise speeds. Uh, so, while cruising speeds at a particular altitude, it must consume very less fuel and while giving the uh, while it moves, while the thrust levels are very high. Uh, when uh, the engine takes off. Now, while talking about this, the family of propulsion engines developments are piston engines, turboprop engines, turbojet engines, turbofan engines, ramjet engine, scramjet engines. So, they uh, these engines are uh, over the period of time these engines have been um, have been developed to travel from subsonic Mach number to very high Mach no, high hypersonic Mach number. So, uh, uh, that is the reason that these propulsion engines are required and they these engines are mainly considered for their operation at different altitude level. Now, as I already mentioned that if you look at the broadly thermal circuits, one for jet engine, other for propeller type engines. The very simple diagram, schematic diagram can be shown here that it is a simple gas turbine engines. Uh, for a jet engine what happens? The, uh, the in a similar concept in a simple gas turbine engines, turbine power is sufficient to drive the compressors. So, in we have comp uh, we have a combustion chamber and um, the gas that comes out from the turbine exhaust. So, instead of they release it to atmosphere we try to use that uh, it has to be used as a jet to have it to use its power as a jet we use a nozzle and this nozzle main purpose of this nozzle when the exhaust comes out it gives the thrust. So, es essentially the power that is available in the exhaust or, or through jet the aircraft gets necessary thrust. So, if you look at very basic TS diagram, so compressor part that is, is a continuous compression and it gives necessary compression ratio and while expanding it expands in two parts, one is in a turbine, second one is in the nozzle and the turbine part is mainly used for um, drive to drive the compressor and the nozzle uh, expansion that is um, used may to mainly that is for thrust. And this is what happens in a jet engines. Whereas in a propeller engines, uh, the uh, it goes in a similar manner uh, as in a conventional gas turbine cycles. But the end, uh, uh, another difference that remains at the, as it is that in a conventional gas uh, turbine engine, the turbine just drives the compressors. So in addition to this, we have a propeller attached to it. 
So, power for the propeller is achieved also achieved from the turbines. So, in a sense that the turbine drives the propeller as well as the compressor and when it gets the thrust, major thrust comes from the propeller and some partial thrust that comes from the exhaust. So, if you look at the TSTI diagram, so there is no nozzle here, so the expansion is only in the turbine. And so, this, this variant we call this as a turbo prop engine, means it is a propeller type engine. And we will try to discuss both the cycles uh, in this in our lecture. So, let me go to next uh, part the performance criteria. So, while talking about this performance criteria, we must emphasize that here the while dealing with aircraft cycle, our main attention is to generate thrust and this thrust we get it through uh, uh, jets that comes out from the exhaust. Now, uh, for that we can simply as you talk about a schematic diagram and this we call this as a we call this as a this power unit or propulsive duct we can call this as a propulsive duct so what does this propulsive duct it contains a power unit and on this duct there is ambient pressure that acts on it so there is air that enters at certain velocity ca and air that goes as a um, exist from the this duct as velocity C j and how this C j uh, velocity it gets, it gets to the power unit and this power unit is, unit is nothing but our gas turbine engine. So, we consider a propulsive duct in which air enters to the, uh, to the intake at certain velocity and, and this velocity is equal to and opposite to that of forward speed of the aircraft. So, as if that the at same speed this duct is also moving. The power unit accelerates the air so that air leaves as a jet with higher velocity and with mass flow rate assuming to be constant the net thrust um, due is mainly due to rate of change of momentum and simply this follows the Newton's law and this no this momentum we call this as a gross momentum thrust. And apart from this, there is also a part called as intake momentum drag. So, this net thrust is mainly due to this two difference. And if the exhaust gases are not expanded completely to atmosphere, later on we will see that when the gas comes uh, up out of this duct, it has a certain pressure P j, but whereas the atmospheric pressure or ambient pressure can be at different pressure P A or temperature, temperature could be T A. So, that means, um, uh, the, the we are not able to expand the jet to this ambient pressure. So, in such cases there will be an additional thrust that res will result from due to pressure difference and we call this as a pressure thrust. So, the total thrust would be sum of this momentum thrust that comes from this uh, Newton's law and also from the and pressure thrust. So, typically mathematically uh, we can represent that we can say that if C A is your intake velocity, C J is the exit velocity and A J is the jet exit area, then we can say intake momentum drag is m times C A, cross momentum thrust would be uh, m times C J. So, difference between these two would be uh, uh, m times uh, C J minus C A, this is this part we um, get it as a from the Newton's law and the pressure thrust that we get from this from the pressure difference that is P j minus P a. Okay. And next uh, criteria that we are going to define is a propulsive efficiency. These are the words that we are going to use that how the conventional engine developments has happened based on these performance criteria. So, one part one type one performance criteria is known as a propulsive efficiency. So, it is defined as the ratio of useful propulsive energy or thrust power to the sum of the uh, that sum of that energy and unused kinetic energy of the jet. So, first we have to calculate useful propulsive energy and uh, in the denominator we have to keep it the sum of this propulsive energy plus the unused kinetic energy. 
So, this is also known as fraud efficiency or propulsive efficiency is a better approach or better word. Now, here we should emphasize that the unused enthalpy of jet is ignored in our calculation because we do not talk about temperature here because and that is what the unused enthalpy is ignored here. So, based on this what we can do is that in a simple sense if you assume that the jet is completely expanded to ambient so that there is no uh, pressure thrust then we can have the total thrust is m c a times c j minus c a that is numerator which we call this as a uh, thrust power ok thrust power and the denominator is nothing but this thrust power plus this unused kinetic energy. So, unused kinetic energy means C j minus C a is the unused velocity and that, that is square ok. Now, after simplifying this expression we can find that propulsive efficiency takes the following simplified form that is equal to eta p is equal to twice by divided by 1 plus C j by C a. Now, a close look of this expression will tell you that when C a is 0, C a is 0 means that it is there is no air that is rushing into the duct and f is maximum that means whatever we get from this power unit that uh, gives the maximum thrust but that point of time we don't get propulsion we again don't get a propul I mean efficiency propulsive efficiency goes to zero but at the other extreme that when you have uh, C j jet velocity and uh, the air velocity that is entering that same your f goes to 0 that is that means there is no thrust, but that point of time we get maximum propulsive efficiency, but these two facts these are two contradicting in nature we because we need both of them we need thrust we need also good amount of propulsive efficiency. So, the major concern would be major target will be that we must have a C j must be greater than C a, but this difference should not be too high that which will make this thrust to be 0. So, you will have some substantial um, means some optimum difference between C j and C a. And this particular concept of propulsive efficiency gives many family of uh, propulsion units in the which is in the order of jet velocity and decrease in the mass flow rate that are suitable for uh, designed aircraft or cruise speeds. And these engines are piston engines, turboprop engines, turbojet engines, turbofan engines, ramjet engine and scramjet engine. So, these are the over the period of time this engine development. We will not go all these engines because that is a different topic, but we will mainly concentrate one simple turbojet engines out of which we will do all our understandings clear as far as this course is concerned. And our main intention would be that when the we have to look for a power unit for a cruise speeds desired range of the aircraft and maximum rate of climb and thrust and fuel consumption. So, for this reason the propulsive efficiency is a measure of effectiveness with which the propulsive duct is used to propel the aircraft. That is in addition to the propulsive efficiency another performance criteria is the nothing but the energy conversion efficiency and overall efficiency. I mentioned the here that we had did not take care about unused enthalpy. Let us see how you are going to uh, take care this unused enthalpy. So, this, uh, this is taken care through energy conversion efficiency or uh, eta E. That means, how much if you look at this energy conversion efficiency, it is defined as the ratio of kinetic energy of the propulsion to the energy supplied by the fuel. So, energy supplied by the fuel is nothing but m f into q net, q net is nothing but is calorific value of the fuel. And in the numerator, we have kinetic energy of the propulsion that is half m times square c j square minus c a square. And we also use the another uh, uh, word that is overall efficiency uh, which is the ratio of useful work done to overcome the drag to the energy supplied by the fuel. So, for the same energy supply the useful drag that the work done could be m times C a that is thrust power uh, into C different C j minus C a. And in a word that you can say the thrust times the C a divided by m f into this. 
So, here we define three efficiency one is energy conversion efficiency, overall efficiency and prepared to this we have propulsive efficiency. But however, looking at these expressions that we can find there is some similarity among them. So, if you look at the denominator part of this propulsive efficiency this term that is m times C a into C j minus C a plus half C j minus C a square if you simplify this and we can find out this this denominator part turns out to this expression nothing but half m times C j square minus C a square and this term is appearing in energy conversion efficiency. So, by putting these things one can find a relation that how overall efficiency and propulsive uh, overall efficiency is related to propulsive efficiency and energy conversion efficiency that is overall efficiency is equal to eta e that is energy conversion efficiency multiplied by propulsion efficiency. Now, if you look at this particular figure that we start with a fuel and end is with her pro useful propulsive work. So, in between we have the engines that converts the energy uh, from the fuel and the propulsive duct that gives the uh, propulsive power or these things and side by side while running this particular things we there is a transmission system because turbine has to drive the compressors. So, there is a transmission efficiency. However, if you include this transmission efficiency the overall efficiency we can rewrite it as overall efficiency is equal to energy conversion efficiency multiplied by propulsion efficiency efficiency multiplied by transmission efficiency. The next important criteria we are going to discuss is about specific fuel consumption and specific thrust. Uh, uh, so, this uh, since we are talking about efficiency useful power from the fuel then we must take into account that how much fuel we are going to consume. So, this is in similar sense the specific fuel consumption we are going to use, use for our requirement and for this the, now this fuel is used for thrust. So, we call this as a specific thrust whereas, in power generation we say it is a specific power and now uh, this thrust requirement has two important criteria one is at sea level uh, performance for maximum power and maximum turbine inlet temperatures other is the takeoff requirement and cruise performance at optimum cruise uh, speed and uh, intended altitude operations. So, based on these two criteria we we have to find the specific thrust requirement for an aircraft and so because of these reasons we have to redefine this overall efficiency in the form of specific fuel consumptions. This one aspect and second thing is that we have to define another word which we call as a specific thrust and that is defined, defined as a thrust per unit mass of the flow rate that is F s is equal to F f s is basically F s is equal to m f by f thrust per unit mass flow rate of air is nothing but the uh, specific thrust and this specific thrust we are normally going to represent in the form of a non dimensional form we call this as a fuel air ratio. And let us see that how you are going to get this uh, expression that we start with overall efficiency from this basic definitions m times C a C j minus C a divided by m f into q, q, q net and that is nothing but f times C a into m, m f by q net. Now, here what you do is that we define this fuel consumption efficiency S f c which is nothing but m f divided by f and that we that that term we call this as a specific fuel consumptions SFC. And so, your Q net is nothing but the calorific value of the fuel. Now, if you recall that your fuel air ratio F that is nothing but mass flow rate of fuel to the divided by mass flow rate of air that is M. And from this then we can define a term F s that is specific thrust in the form of non dimensional way that is fuel air ratio to the by S f c. And here the S f c is typical broad sense F s c is normally represented in kg per hour Newton 
and a specific thrust is defined in the term of Newton second per kg. Okay. Now, let us move on to simple turbojet engine based on which we are going to study the performance criteria. So, if you look at a turbojet engines, so this is a kind of a duct systems consisting of many components like intake, compressor, combustion chamber, turbine, nozzle and we have um, nozzle and then we have from this nozzle we get this thrust. And every, every component does its job that means air. Uh, so, in compared to our from our previous gas turbine cycle and this cycle the main, main difference is that since it is their thrust specifics two additional components that drops in one is intake system other is the nozzle systems. And other syst other param other components like compressor, turbine, combustion chamber they are more or less same. But only thing is that when you deal with the earlier gas turbine cycles for power generations they are the approach was that when you calculate this uh, temperatures or pressures, it could be a static pressure or temperature because we do not have a significant change in the uh, kinetic energy uh, while when the flow takes uh, goes from one component to other. But here since they are thrust specific and this is and we the, it is very it is not possible to ignore this uh, kinetic energy. At the same time since we, we are also looking for the altitude specific, so potential energy also is taken into account here. So, anyway whatever may be the uh, things, but very common the very common features that components we have compressor, turbine and combustion chamber they are common, but what is the difference intake and nozzle systems. So, in uh, using this simple turbojet engines in our study we are mainly concentrate on two things one is this intake systems other is the nozzle system that gives the and we call this nozzle as a propelling nozzle. And uh, now next question is that why this intake requirement is there. So, we will see that we must say that for the things we must we know that we must have a Cj at the same time must have air that should enter Ca. Okay. Now, we cannot make this Ca to be 0 because there is no meaning of uh, this thrust. So, so, we must have a C A. Now, to get a uh, means the velocity should uh, appear that should enter to this compressor. So, for that a cont for the continuous supply of this C A at a fixed rate we require a unit which we call as a intake and this nozzle gives this thrust. So, this intake system why we require because uh, to be frank that uh, when we are operating a subsonic aircraft which is cruising at Mach number 0.8 to 0.5 and uh, for a supersonic aircraft when it cruise at 2 to 2.5, we expect that the axial Mach number to the compressor should be in the range of uh, 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. Now, how we will ensure that the flow Mach number at the entry to compression is this, it should be 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 that is what this intake system that does its job. So, what it does during takeoff, the engine operates at maximum power uh, and air flow in such situation intake scatter the wide range of operating conditions. And what does this mean that this intake, this intake is typically nothing but a adiabatic duct and in this adiabatic duct the intake requirement is to minimize the pressure loss up to compressor phase by ensuring uniform pressure and velocity at all flight conditions. Uh, at low forward speeds that is static conditions the intake acts as a nozzle. So, means its geometry is such that at low for forward speed low speeds it acts as a nozzle that means flow accelerates when it tries to reach the compressor. Now, when the when it is a normal speed already the flight reaches at a very normal speed the intake acts as a diffuser uh, that means flow deceleration takes place that means it reduces the flow uh, speed uh, by virtue of its geometry because in the, you will find that when the geometry is such that in one uh, subsonic flow the, uh, the shape of nozzle and for supersonic flow the concept of nozzle uh, are uh, geometric specific. Okay. Now, in this but by whatever you do either you accelerate the flow or decelerate the flow 
one thing that uh, that happens is that pressure always rises in the intake. So, when the pressure always rises and this pressure we call this as a ram pressure rise. Uh, so, if you look at the T s diagrams, so 1 to 2 is actual for the compression stage, but to reach 1 we have to go from ambient A to 1. So, this particular part happens in the intake system and similarly from in the exhaust side what happens from the turbine the expansion takes place from 3 to 4 that is from the turbine and rest of the expansion takes place in the nozzle that is from 4 to 5. So, based on this we are going to define this some other parameters and this we call this as a intake efficiency. So, intake efficiencies are defined in two ways one is one we conventionally we call as a isentropic efficiency which is defined in the form of temperature rise other we express in the form of ram efficiency and that is expressed in the form of pressure rise. So, these two methods we, uh, we use for to analyze the intake system for a turbojet engine. Now, if you look at these things and you recall that we are drawing a T s diagram and your uh, C a is your air speed that enters in the intake and C 1 is the speed that which air enters to the compressor. Now, if you look at this uh, draw the T s diagram. Uh, so, we draw the constant pressure line P a which is ambient and we start with a condition A and we have to reach the condition 1 that is A to 1 is your actual uh, process that happens. Now, on this diagram we are going to superimpose that what should be the stagnation pressure values. So, corresponding to this P a we have stagnation pressure P naught a and corresponding to this P 1 that is static pressure condition 1 we have stagnation pressure P naught 1. So, if you drop uh, a normal to this temperature axis then we will get the temperature values uh, depending on its case situation like if you drop this value from a constant uh, from the total pressure line or stagnation pressure line we get stagnation temperature the vertical line and here we will also get the stagnation uh, sorry, static temperature value if you start from the static pressure uh, line. So, T a is a static pressure where the T naught a is your stagnation pressure because this point refers to a stagnation pressure value. Okay. So, this is how you define now let us see that we are going to define this uh, intake efficiency. So, first intake first form is de defined in the form of isentropic efficiency eta i that is T naught dash by minus T a by T naught 1 minus T a that means um, the actual temperature rise to the isentropic temperature rise. And uh, similarly for ram efficiency can be calculated as P naught 1 minus P a by P naught a minus P a. Since we know uh, the other working formula that since I in the last class I have I have uh, explained, explained about the ratio of st stagnation pressure to static pressure with respect to uh, and that relation with respect to Mach number. So, one can find out the relations that is P naught 1 by P a as a function of Mach number and T naught 1 by T a as a function of Mach number. So, here we are going to introduce this P naught 1, 1 by P a as a function of intake efficiency eta i okay. and its intake efficiency or that value uh, is normally taken as 0.93 for aircraft cycle. Apart from this intake efficiency there is another term that is widely used we call this as a pressure recovery factor. Uh, so, the in order to quote the efficiency of intake system through pressure recovery factor what we must know is that that which is nothing but the ratio of stagnation pressure available at the compressor inlet to the ambient stagnation pressure. So, if you just want to calculate that this ratio pressure recovery factor P naught 1 P naught 1 with respect to compressor and P naught A with respect to ambient and ratio between these two gives the pressure recovery factor 
and we can simply write that P naught 1 by P A is equal to P naught 1 by P A into P A by P naught A and, and this P naught 1 by P A is again a function of Mach number. So, these are the working formula that are used to calculate the pressure recovery factor. So, this is how we want to analyze the intake part. Now, let us see how we are going to analyze the, uh, the propelling systems. So, propelling system is uh, attached towards the end of the gas turbine engine. So, here what we see is something leap, uh, we, when, when the flow goes out of a noz, uh, nozzle through uh, to exhaust. So, when the after expansion uh, the flow has to pass through a nozzle. So, the nozzle has to do this job to do take care about the flow expansion. So, the propelling nozzle refers to the component of engine systems uh, in which the working fluid is expanded to high velocity jet. So, depending on the location of engine on the aircraft, the propelling nozzle finds a compromising positions because or, or in a balanced approach that engine should uh, be in a balanced positions and typically it is a, con a convergent type or many situation it also ha can have divergent type or many case we can have a variable nozzle also. And the thermodynamic analysis or approach is based on through isentropic efficiency uh, that is one part and second part is calculation of specific thrust coefficients. Now, let us see how you are going to get. Uh, this first the isentropic efficiency is expressed as the ratio of temperature difference between actual expansion to isentropic expansion and its value is typically 0.95. Whereas, specific thrust coefficient is nothing but is the ratio of actual gross thrust to the thrust that is resultant from isentropic flow. Had the flow been isentropic, what would have been the thrust, what thrust would have developed. Some other parameter of importance is the velocity coefficient, which is defined as the ratio of actual to isentropic jet velocity. Now, when the expansion is complete to ambient pressure, the specific thrust coefficient becomes same value as velocity coefficients. So, we will see that how you are going to analyze this propell propelling nozzle. Now, let us see that what, the, how, what does this nozzle propelling nozzle do. So, it main intention that flow it has to uh, the flow has to expand. So, uh, expand and we get a jet out of it. Now, when this and the initial condition that comes out for this nozzle is nothing but your stagnation condition at the nozzle inlet. So, we start this uh, stagnation condition either P naught 4 and T naught 4, T naught 4 and P naught 4, this is the value and from this value it has to expand to ambient conditions. Now, while expanding that there could be two possibilities that uh, the nozzle is sufficient enough to expand into ambient conditions or the nozzle is not doing its job it could not expand um, properly to its ambient conditions. So, when it is unable to expand to its ambient conditions, we call this as a uh, unchoked nozzle. So, outlet condition on those situation will be P 5 and T 5. So, it is not uh, expanded properly. Now, when the nozzle becomes choked, that means at particular conditions, nozzle becomes choked and those conditions we say the nozzle is choked and we get another pressure ratio instead of P 5 we got call this as a P C. So, basically there are three possibilities nozzle expands to this at uh, completely to am ambient pressure or it will be unchoked conditions it will be the condition after the uh, uh, nozzle uh, it will be P 5 and T 5 other thing is that third condition is nozzle will be choked that condition will be P C and um, T C. So, these three conditions we can have. So, if you look at this particular situation when you have unchoked nozzle, uh, the pressure ratio that is P naught 4 by P A is less than P naught 4 by P C. So, uh, so we will have in the 0 0.5 instead of this ideally if you look at that ambient pressure is still below 5 but still on a, the, we, we are not getting that ambient condition through this nozzle. So, it is a unchoked nozzle. Now, when the nozzle is choked that means nozzle cannot expand further mass flow rate is freezed 
and that those condition is decided by the critical pressure and temperature conditions. Now, when the mass flow rate is freezed, so we call this as a sonic flow at the nozzle and those conditions are decided and the uh, by its uh, by the critical value known as critical pressure or temperatures. So, we call this as a choke nozzle and if you that and there instead of 5 the we will uh, we will write them as a condition C or C dash. So, expansion goes from 4 to C. Okay. So, this is how uh, the basic philosophy of nozzle process in a turbojet engines. So, based on that we have calculated uh, different terms, first term is a non dimensional term we call as a specific thrust coefficient k f that is equal to m plus m c 5 plus, plus a 5 into p 5 minus p a divided by m. Other uh, term is velocity coefficient c c, c j by c d c j dash and we also define this critical pressure value when the flow is choked. So, when the flow is choked this mass flow rate can be written as m times rho c c c by into a 5. Apart from this we have the um, jet efficiency isentropic efficiency of nozzle eta j we have expressed in the form of temperature drops and, and also this eta j can be also written in the form of pressure drop and temperature drop from p 4 to p 5. And in fact, these expressions are used to calculate the uh, or uh, typically these expressions are used for as a working formula and that they are derived based on the gas dynamic principle of uh, the conditions uh, of uh, the uh, how the static conditions and stagnation uh, conditions are related in terms of pressure and in terms of temperature. Apart from that, we have introduced terms like efficiency term. Okay. And next aspect is that ha after having uh, getting the uh, required jet, now let us say that from that jet how we are going to evaluate the thrust and that we call as a thrust on a turbojet engines. So, as I mentioned we can have a situation that exit nozzle exit condition can be a choked or unchoked condition and mostly it is choked conditions and when it is choked condition that means nozzles are designed that it has to do its job uh, till it uh, till its choking conditions. So, based on that uh, those conditions we are going to evaluate the parameter exit parameter and with this exit parameter we are going to calculate the thrust. So, accurate indication of uh, thrust on a jet engine is very vital for takeoff conditions. So, but there is no direct method of its quantifications. And this uh, thrust variation is controlled by the fuel flow, flow which is limited by factors such as permissible values of rotational speed, turbine inlet temperature and flow rate. So, in a simple turbojet engines with fixed area conversion nozzle we are going to calculate how the thrust is related to the pressure ratio in the nozzle. So, means that we are going to give a give an estimate uh, a layman, in a layman sense that how you are going to regulate the press by regulating the pressure ratio across the nozzle we can going to uh, control the thrust. So, this is the basic principle. So, at a takeoff condition the aircraft is stationary and the nozzle is assumed to be choked for which thrust can be calculated through simple measurable parameters. So, how it is calculated? So, thrust is basically two parts m times C, C 5 is the jet velocity plus this pressure drag that is F 5 into P 5 minus P A. Now, pu putting this value mass flow rate as rho A C, we can get this particular expressions rho 5 A 5 C 5 square plus F 5 into P 5 minus P A. So, from this equation we can find out uh, this and we also know that we have to use this con uh, the terms like density is calculated based on the density at state 5 that is C 5 is calculated condition 5 from the pre pressure and temper P 5 and T 5 conditions. And this P 5 and T 5 conditions are limited with respect to uh, its critical pressure values and that critical pressure values uh, is number is this gamma plus 1 by 2 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1 that is P 4 by P 5 
and T4 by T5 is goes to simple relation gamma plus 1 by 2. So, best these expressions we are going to use here. How? Now, from these equations here we are going to uh, replace the row 5 from, from P as, P, uh, as row 5 as from the mass flow rate and from the pressure and temperature ratio and from the C 5 that can be replaced as C 5 square it can be replaced at twice 5 uh, twice C P T naught 4 minus T naught 5 and C P by R uh, ratio is equal to gamma by gamma minus 1. So, when we simplify this particular equations we get a term which is a non dimensional term F phi F by thrust by F 5 times P A. A 5 is nothing but area and this uh, the, the A 5 is the exit area at condition 5 and P A is your ambient pressure. And this becomes a function of a parameter which is nothing but P 4 by P A. P 4 condition is here and P A condition is here. So, the non dimensional uh, term uh, F by P A 5 P A is now becomes a simplified relations as F by A 5 times P A is equal to 1.2594 multiplied by P 4 by P A minus 1. Now, see here the importance of this expressions that now, if you take this uh, simplify this equation, we get another relations a non dimensional term F by F i P a plus 1 divided by R p r and R p r is known as ram pressure ratio and this ram pressure ratio is nothing but P naught 1 by P a that is equal to 1.25 9 4 into P naught 4 by P A and this P naught 4 by P A is nothing but in, uh, engine pressure ratio E P R and this nozzle pressure ratio is nothing nozzle pressure ratio is defined by P 4 by P A that is equal to P naught 4 by P naught 1 and P naught 1 by P A. So, that means nozzle pressure ratio is equal to EPR multiplied by RPR and this left hand uh, side of this expression is the non dimensional number for a for the thrust indicator. So, this non dimensional number can be regulated by this one particular parameter which is known as nozzle pressure ratio and in fact, this simplified because we started with a big equations and ultimately we end up in a very simplified empirical relations by just by regulating the nozzle pressure ratio one how one can uh, use this control this term of non dimensional pressure term. So, this is how the thrust is calculated for a turbojet engine. So, now we are going to solve a numerical problem for a simple turbojet engine and with a main intention is that here we have to look for thrust not the power output. So, the problem is that for a given turbojet engines we have specifications as compression pressure ratio, we have we know the turbine inlet temperature 1050 Kelvin, we have isentropic efficiency for intake 0.93, compressor 0.85, turbine 0.9 and we have propelling nozzle efficiency 0.95, mechanical and combustion efficiency this is required as a transmission efficiency and combustion efficiency 0.98, combustion pressure loss is 4 percent of delivery pressure, exit pressure loss is fixed at 0 0.03 bar, ambient condition is 0 0.26 bar that means it is at some altitude conditions where pressure is ambient pressure is 0 0.26 bar and temperature is 220 Kelvin and the flight is moving at Mach number of 0 0.8. So, to solve this problem the first thing that we have to do 
is that we have to draw the uh, circuit diagram T H diagram. So, T H diagram we will just imply some of the important uh, processes first is intake to compressor we have uh, two pressure line intake pressure and compression pressure. So, it will go like this and from this there we have turbine and the nozzle. So, we say ambient condition A and we have compressor inlet condition P naught 1 and it goes this is compressor exit condition 0 2 then we have turbine that is 0 3, 0 4 process, then 4 to 5 is 5 is nothing but their ambient pressure. So, it is nothing not static, so it is a static says. So, 0 ambient to 0 1 intake, 0 1 to 0 2 compression. 0 3 to 0 4 turbine of course, prior to this 0 2 to 0 3 combustion and 0 4 to 0 5 nozzle. So, here I have used 0 because this refers to we have to use the stagnation value. So, ambient is given for which we have P A 0 0.26 bar and T A is 220 Kelvin. right? So, from this because since we have known the Mach number we have to first calculate C A and the C A is nothing but square root of gamma uh, sorry uh, A speed of sound first you have to calculate A square root of gamma R T and at this altitude the speed of sound will be 297 meter per second gamma is 1.4 uh, r is equal to 287 joule per kg kelvin and T A is your 220 kelvin and we know Mach number that is 0 0.8 and that is nothing but C A by A is 0.8. So, this will give you C A as 238 meter per second. So, we know C A. Then we will start with intake. So, the intake when you start uh, we use the working relation that is T naught 1 is equal to T A plus C A square by twice C P and this uh, C A square by twice C P value we can calculate C P we can write 1.005 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, C A square by twice C P value is required specifically that number will be 28 we can calculate that is Kelvin and uh, T A is uh, given T A is already given. So, we can calculate T A is 220. So, we can calculate T naught 1 as 248 Kelvin. So, once you know T naught 1 we can calculate P naught 1 by P 1 for and we have intake efficiency 0.93 that is nothing but 1 plus intake efficiency times C A square by twice C P T A to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. 
So, this will give you the value of P naught 1 by P A because C, C A square by twice C P we got 28 T A already we know intake efficiency eta i 0 0.93. So, P naught 1 by P A uh, sorry P naught 1 by P 1 we can get as 1.48. So, this will give you P naught 1 as 0 0.3848 bar. Okay. P A P A. So, we got the condition 1 P naught uh, 1 and T naught 1. Then we have to go for the compressor. So, compression process that is 0 1 to 0 2. Okay. So, we can calculate P naught 2 is equal to P naught 1 into compression pressure ratio 8. So, P naught 1 is known. So, P naught 2 would be 3.07 bar. So, you know the compression, then we can use this working formula for compressor T naught 2 minus T naught 1 is equal to T naught 1 by eta C P naught 2 by P naught 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1. Okay. So, all this number is known T naught 1 is 248, eta C compressor efficiency is 0.85, P naught 2 is 3.07 bar, P naught 2 by P naught 1 is P naught 2 by P naught 1 is 8. So, this difference T naught 2 minus T 1 would be uh, 2 36 Kelvin. So, when this difference is 2 36 Kelvin, so we know T naught 1. So, T naught 2 would be 484 Kelvin. Okay. So, we, we know the compressors, then we will move to turbine. So, turbine process is 0 3 to 0 4. To calculate the turbine process, first we have to find out turbine work, which is nothing but um, compressor work divided by its mechanical efficiency. Okay. Now, this compression work is nothing but C P A into T naught 2 minus T naught 1 and this turbine work is C P G into T naught 3 minus T naught 4 that is equal to C P by mechanical efficiency into T naught 2 minus T naught 1. So, C P G that is gas hot gas that value is 1.148 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Mechanical efficiency is 0 0.98. So, from this equation we all know that C P A 1.005 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Now, from this equation we can find out what T naught 3 minus T naught 4 because all this number we know. So, T naught 3 minus T naught 4 would be 210 0.8 Kelvin. So, 
and T naught 3 is turbine inlet temperature that is 1250 Kelvin. So, this will give you T naught 4 as T naught 4 as 1093.2 Kelvin. So, we know T naught 3 once you have this then we have to come back to pressure, pressure side and if you look at there is a uh, um, there is a combustion chamber pressure loss 0 0.44 percent of the delivery pressure of the compressor. So, if you have to calculate the pressure P naught 3 is equal to P naught 2 into 1 minus delta P B by P naught 2 and this, this is 4 percent. So, we know P naught 2 then we can calculate P naught 3 as 2.947 bar. So, we have P naught 3 then uh, we can write down this turbine efficiency as T naught 3 minus T naught 4 divided by T naught 3 minus T naught 4 dash isentropic value. So, that is nothing but 0 0.9. So, this will give you T naught 3, this will give this value will this from this we can calculate isentropic value T naught 4 dash because T naught 3 is known, T naught 4 we calculated. So, T naught 4 would be 4 dash would be one zero one six Kelvin. So once you know this T naught four dash, then we can write this isentropic process for turbine. P naught four by P naught three will be T naught four dash by T naught three to the power gamma by gamma minus one. So here gamma we can say as 1.33. So, from this equation we can find out P naught 4 as uh, 1.284 bar because we know T naught 4 dash, we know T naught 3, we have T naught 3 and we have P naught 3 already then we can calculate P naught 4. So, P naught 3 is here, P naught 4 is here. Okay. So, once we have P naught 4, then we can find out NPR that is nozzle pressure ratio that is the ratio of P naught 4 by P A and is 1.284 divided by ambient pressure is 0 0.26. So, this number is 4.94. Once you have this, then we will move to propelling nozzle. So, the propelling nozzle is the next component. So, their working formula we can have to write P naught 4 by P C is equal to 1 divided by 1 my minus 1 by eta j gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 divided by gamma by gamma minus 1. And here eta j propelling nozzle efficiency is 0 0.95, gamma is 1.33. Okay. So, uh, so, all these numbers are known. So, this value we can calculate as 1.9. So, earlier we have P naught 4 by P A it was 4.94 and this is greater than P naught 4 by P C. So, this means nozzle is choking. So, when this nozzle is choking, it is 
now controlled through choked conditions for which we can calculate the condition 5 that is T 5 will be equal to T c that is twice by gamma plus 1 to the power this T naught 4 and this value is 892 Kelvin and P 5 is P c and this value will be P naught 4 divided by 1 by P naught 4 by P c. So, this is 1.284 divided by 1.9. So, this is 0 0.675 bar. So, we got P 5 T 5. So, we can find out rho 5. Rho 5 is equal to P c by R T c. So, R is 287 joule per kg Kelvin, P c already known, T c is known. So, density at this stage 5 will be 0 0.263 kg per meter cube. Then we can find out C 5. C 5 is nothing but square root of because it is speed of sound gamma r t c at choking condition Mach number is 1. So, gamma r t c. So, gamma is 1.33 r is 287 t c is into uh, t c is to 892. So, this number would be 583.5 meter per second. Now, from this we can find another 5 term that is A 5 is nothing but A 5 by m. If basically if you take mass flow rate choke mass flow rate m 5 is equal to rho 5 A 5 C 5 and then you can find out A 5 by m is equal to 1 by rho 5 C 5. C 5 is here rho 5 is here. So, this number would be 0 0.0065 meters second meter square second pi kg. Okay. Then we can find out specific thrust. F s is equal to C 5 minus C a plus A 5 by m P, P c minus P a. So, all the number we know that C 5 is 583.5 in our previous calculation minus C a um, uh, that is speed of sound that is 238 that enters A 5 by m we have calculated 0 0.0065 P c is your critical pressure 0 0.675 minus P a ambient pressure that is 0 0.26 and here it is bar. So, you have to multiply 10 to the power 5. So, when you do this we can get specific thrust as F s is equal to 614.5 Newton second per kg. Then once you have these things on prior to that we have to use uh, the fuel consumption. So, for the fuel consumption you have to use this particular chart or bar. So, for that we require two parameters T naught 2 that is uh, compressor delivery temperature 484 Kelvin uh, delta T that is T naught 3 minus T naught 2 that change is uh, uh, that equal to 1250 minus 484 that is 766 Kelvin and from this we can calculate this fuel air ratio for this delta T and this inlet conditions. So, this will give you fuel air ratio theoretical value as 0 
So, when you have theoretical fair value, then you can take real actual value that is F theoretical divided by combustion efficiency that is 0 0.98. So, 0 0.22 by 0 0.98. So, actual value would be 0 0.02244. So, actual fuel layer ratio is this. Then we can calculate SFC. SFC by definition it is 3600 F actual divided by FS. So, FS you know, F actual you know. So, SFC we can calculate as 0. 1315 kg per hour Newton. So, this is how we calculate fuel consumption. So, this particular problem will give you a complete understanding how you start a turbojet engine from its intake side and you end with your values or calculations in the propelling nozzle side. Now, when we end with this, your main intention should be calculation of thrust fuel consumption. So, with this we conclude for the uh, aircraft propulsion part 1 lecture. So, in the nine, my next lecture, I will continue aircraft performance cycle part 2. Thank you for your attention.